Welcome to another episode of Crazy Fitness Guy Healthy Living Podcast slash Weekly Motivation with Crazy Fitness Guy. Well, uh, today is Friday, the 9th of September. Holy moly, guacamole. It's been, even though it was a short week, it was very, very long. How can a short week be very long? It felt very long for many reasons. One of them happens to be my phone provider that I get zero reception around my house and and everything else. Yay, for technology. Yeah, 155 bucks a month for 2G. 2G doesn't exist anymore. How does that work? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, ask them. How do you pay for something that doesn't exist? Sounds like a scam. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm having a weird Friday. I literally been out and about from like 10 o'clock in the morning to literally 1.50 in the afternoon. So basically my day is pretty much halfway over, uh, especially, especially because I got karate at 7 and 15 tonight and I have to leave at 6 o'clock. So yeah, this is great. My, my Friday is always busy. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, just like every day, pretty much every day, every single minute of the day, I'm always busy. It's, it's a curse, apparently. So uh, at the moment, uh, my guest and I are having a lot of technical difficulties. You know, amazing technology that we have. Uh, you love it, you hate it at the same exact time. I, you know, it's, it's fun. Anyway, uh, before, see if my guys can come out, uh, just out of uh, curiosity, uh, anybody out there who likes technology, uh, let me know in the chat, and what do you not like about technology? For me right now, what I don't like about technology is when it just doesn't work the way you want it to work, especially when you have to pay a boatload of a lump sum of cash each every month, and it just, that's what it does. That's where I draw the line. Anyway, uh, before we get started, and... Uh, if you want to follow me on social media, you can follow me at, on uh, Facebook and Instagram at Jimmy Claire Speaker and Twitter on Jimmy Claire Speak. You can follow Crazy Fitness Guy on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Crazy Fitness Guy. This kind of sounds redundant, but still, you can follow it there. And make sure you uh, catch the live stream every week and subscribe to our channels across platforms. You can watch it on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and you can listen to it on the Wisdom app. And once this episode goes live, you can listen to it on Apple, Google, and Spotify, and 100 plus platforms, which is probably too which would probably be illegal to list all of them. And if you want to help support the show and many and like our mission and want to keep us up and running, because guess what? It takes money to run a website, unfortunately. It's free for you, but someone else is always paying for it. So... Uh, consider uh, subscribe to the premium podcast for five dollars a month or twenty dollars a year, and I'm going to be including some new plans, maybe in the future, just not around the corner at the moment because I tried that before, and let's just say it was like poo. It just did not fit to go, did not fit well together. It just just it doesn't. And 
Oh. Oh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, and uh, yeah, so check out the premium podcast. Just go to www.crazyfitnessguy.com slash support. Anyway, uh, I do not know what's going on with my guest at the moment. So I want to throw this question out there. Uh, are we becoming catch potatoes? I really hope not. Because, you know, they call sitting the new drug. It's, I don't, it hasn't, uh, I, what I try to do is I try to take a break every hour, maybe every 30 minutes, get up, move around. Because I'm, even though I, I don't think I have ADHD, uh, ADHD, but sometimes just sitting too long, it just, ugh, I don't like to sit too long. I get antsy. After about an hour and 55 minutes of a class, I'm like, let me get out of this chair. I'm glued to the chair. Let me get out of here. Uh, but let me know your thoughts in the chat uh, because sometimes I kind of wonder if we come and catch potatoes or not because it's really does uh, so uh, my guest today is Helena but again technology problems you know it's fun um, hey, me? hey can you hear me hi I can hear you loud and clear but can you hear me and see me I don't uh, think I can, my we can I can hear you but I can't see you <laughs> I don't know what it is. I, I honestly don't know what the problem is. I changed cameras. I, I thought maybe it's the camera because I know what my video, my new camera, I cannot use on uh, one of the platforms. And it looks like did this get, one. Did you get like a prompt in the web browser to uh, 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 to like, camera permission? Yeah. Can you see me now? No, unfortunately not. not. Video input. Video input. It's the my light is on. What if you uh, try to leave and come back? You should get like a prompt that oh. says allow video. Okay. Okay, I'll do that. I'll be right back. Sorry. No worries. <laughs> like you said, technology. <laughs> Gotta love it and hate it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll exit and then come back and hopefully it'll work. Yep. So in the meantime, uh, you know, it's technology. Here it is. That's for technology. Yeah, that's my love and hate relationship with technology. Uh, you know, technology happens. It works when it wants to work, and it doesn't. And it doesn't want to work. It clearly does not work. And yeah, I know it's a live stream, and you'd be wondering, Jimmy, didn't you just be ahead of time? Well, that's what makes the live stream interesting. You never know what you're gonna find out. So that's why I always tell you, you gotta watch the live stream every week, even if you watch it on replay. You gotta watch it because guess what? You never know what's gonna happen. Technical difficulties. I'm not gonna edit it out because you want. Know, Hey, mistakes happen. Or oh, it's purpose mistakes. This is not one of the purpose mistakes. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, but you got to love it and you got to hate it at the same time. You know, and if it, the camera doesn't work out, well, whatever. Uh, so I may be talking to, I, hey, I could be talking to myself for, for all I know. That would make, surprise me because I've done that before. Sad but true. Oh, by the way, uh, you know, just thinking, just realizing, uh, my my college is actually having a, a, a TED talk, a TEDx platform on their campus, open to students and faculty. I'm so definitely gonna to apply. I finally just submit. I've just finally uh, finished my first draft last night. Around I think ten thirty ish. 
Yeah, so definitely, uh, I I can't wait until the finish of the t- talk. I I'm like in a crunch by the end. I had to get in by uh, September 18th at by midnight. Oh, that's gonna be fun. Oh, right, here's my guest. <laughs> hey, Helena. No. <laughs> you know, technology it sucks. <laughs> And of course, it's on the live stream. Why not? So, <laughs> well, trust me, I'm really cursing that technology all week. <laughs> Jeez, I tell you, I I totally get it. I mean, I'm I'm invited to be on so many shows, and but there's various platforms, and so I bought this one. It's supposed to be a great camera, but somehow. Certain platforms, it just I can't connect it. It doesn't save the box. Did you save the box? (laughs) Send it back. I should. (laughs) This camera doesn't work for every platform. Take it back. (laughs) Yeah, and uh, so, um, so I get invited to like it works on Zoom, it works on various other platforms, but platforms like this and what's the other one that's a common one that people use um restream i think yeah restream and stream yard it it would not work on restream and i had to just like with you today i i thought okay it's the camera it's not connecting to the platform so i had to unplug it put on this other camera that i have which obviously it's working which is good I'm glad it. <laughs> well, it, you know, uh, before we get started, you, you know, I, I just want to say, yeah, you know, it, it's kind of, it's kind of like my uh, thirty dollar mic at, uh, down at my shore house. It works on Zoom. I think it works on Zoom. It actually, no, no, I think Zoom was a problem, but it worked. Uh, on my live stream for a while, and then it stopped working on my live stream, and uh-huh. and I was like, well, I'm not gonna throw away the mic, and mm-hmm. and I had it since like I think since 2020, the December 2020. So I was like, it's not like it fell apart. It, I just yeah. it, it's one of the plug and play ones. So it's like there's no settings on it. And the computer settings were the same, so like I don't know what's going on with it. But so I left it at the shore house, so I don't have to bring this heavy, dandy metal microphone that comes with this. Oh wow! Yeah. I was like, oh gosh, I. I mean, I I mean, I love it, but take it in off my desk every single time, put it in a box that it can't fit in. Uh, Yeah, personal problems, I guess. (laughs) I know. And, you know, it's been such, um, you know, my background is is fitness and personal training and nutrition for 39 years. And that's what I know. Like, put me in the gym. I will teach you everything about the machines and how to use them. I can design you the most great program. But don't ask me, the trainer, to t- <laughs> teach you about lighting and camera. So it's been it's been a learning process for everybody. I agree with that. Even though yeah. I come up, uh, even though I come up, uh, come from a, a background in uh, technology, I've been familiarized yeah. with it, and pretty much since like I was very little, little, but <laughs> running a website, running a business. Uh, I'm doing everything myself. Uh, I'm, I make mistakes. I fix the mistakes. It takes right. me a while to fix mistakes, but that's just my life at the moment. Just going one thing after the other. And it's like, Jim, why don't you figure this out the first time around? Right. So that's how my brain goes. Yeah, but technology is changing so rapidly. You know, I mean, just think how many updates we deal with. Right. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I would say even on the phone, it's like a daily process. And once it's completed and you really can't say no to these gadgets. Right. Like I think, no, I don't want another update, but it's, it, it's like a forceful question. Schedule your update. But there's like no other question 
other than that, like, I can't say, no, I don't want this. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's, it's kind of like, if you say no, what happens? The, the, is there a self-destruct button? Like, <laughs> like James Bond? No. Like, no, this will self-destruct in five, four, three, two. <laughs> no, I just think that if you don't update, you just left behind <laughs> while well, everyone's progressing in the technology world you're left behind and it's so evident i remember one year i had one of those um you know the flip uh phones way back i mean it was an old phone and all i needed it for really was to you know back then i was a single parent was just to, you know, check in on my son, uh, you know, letting him know I'm going to coming to pick you up soon, all that type of stuff, right? It wasn't really for social media and, and all that. So one of my friends actually, she kind of felt sorry for me because, I, you know, being a single mom, I worked full time, pick up my son, go back home. So I, I think my friends, friend, friends felt sorry for me. They were like, you need a life, you need a boyfriend. I'm like, no, I'm too busy for all that. But she kind of, you know, talked me into getting a new cell phone, something that was more up to date. And I'm telling you, when I, I, I didn't argue with her, I just said, no, I don't want it. You know, it's going to cost too much money, blah, 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 you know, the normal reaction. Uh, she finally get, you know, she said, no, we are going to get you a new phone. So she took me to, uh, in Canada, we have TELUS, which is, um, you know, they offer cable and, and or television uh, programming as well as cell phones. So I got one and I'm telling you, I was, I was like, oh my gosh, you can do everything on this little thing. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm on Facebook. You know, she's like, you got to get on Facebook. And, I, I said to her, you know, you're leading me onto platforms I really don't want to be on, but here we are today. Look at how far advanced we've become. I mean, I wouldn't have never have met you if we weren't able to do this show today, right? Exactly. It's wonderful. I, I'm enjoying this aspect of it. Um, what I find, though... And maybe you can agree with me or not. Um, is that you mentioned earlier? Are we becoming couch potatoes? Well, that's a that's a, you know a very very uh, old saying that was used throughout my career in in all types of marketing to get people active. You know, get off the the couch and get into the gym. Well, I wrote on my blog the new syndrome that's happening. It's gone from couch potato to desk potato. I could see that. Totally. I mean, back in when I started in this industry, the 80s, that was the main drive, you know, that there was a craze, a, a, a new craze happening. And so that craze got people uh, going from work straight to the gym and off of the couch. And now this new transition, this new way of how technology has has been there. Yes, we have our cell phones. We've all, you know, we all have a computer. But it is now taking the workplace into our homes, right? Because corporations have had to uh, restructure having their employees work remotely through home. And so the masses are in front of their computer at a desk in their home. <laughs> so it, you know, it's it's a transitionary period where when COVID first started, I knew that, hey, you know, people are going to be seated at their desks if they're working remotely. 
They're going to be in front of a screen consistently for how many hours, who knows? Because now uh, labor regulations may have to change as well, where the corporations may have to uh, revamp employee rights. You know, I've done corporate wellness for the Bank of Canada, uh, Industrial Alliance, Royal Bank, and people stepped away from their desk, went to the, the gym that was on site, and I would be teaching aerobic classes, doing personal training for the, the employees, either on their lunch breaks or after work. So there's a new phenomenon, and that is desk potato syndrome. Jeez, you know, I, you know, I, 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 I've uh, covered this a little bit on my live stream recently. Mm -hmm. I forgot how long recently it is because you know, it just, there's, not that I am like very forgetful, but I just been going from one thing after the other to the next thing. Uh, mm -hmm. These last two weeks of start of school, the first two or three weeks is always hectic as heck, trying to figure stuff out. And mm -hmm. something I'm new to any of it whatsoever. I've been uh, on campus for many years now, so, but I haven't taken two classes at once in two years. So I'm trying to figure out where is that middle be, uh, to balance both of these things. Uh, uh, but one of the things, uh, uh, like you said, uh, uh, I have been, I've been finding myself been sitting at my desk for one too many hours in July, and I've been feeling overworked. And I felt very, even though I work for myself, uh, I I have a desk in my room, but uh, I set up because there's not enough places in my house where I can use as just an office. I have the guest room, but. I, my my mom told me I can't put it there, and then if, and in the basement I can't put it in the basement because that's where my dad stuff is. But I also can't put it in the basement because well, one is still a mess because of where where it's still in the mid process of unpacking everything from the move. But yeah. the but the, the but where it becomes messy. Uh, but the reason I can't do it down there is because if somebody was vacuuming over my live streaming or walking, you'd hear it up above <laughs> uh, my uh, oh, stream. So I was like, this is not, not, not going to happen. So yeah. unfortunately, I put my desk, but how I differentiate my days from work days and fun time is I got a TV next to me, and I don't watch TV during the week unless it's America's Got Talent on Tuesdays. Hey, I it don't, the show only comes on once a year, so I have to. <laughs> I, if it was on every single day of the year, I'd be like, eh, it's not that special. But it's on every every summer, and I'm like, hey, it's fun. And it's fun to watch. But but so my point is, I I was realizing I was sitting on my at my desk too much. So I've been trying to get back into using my Pomodoro timer method, where tw 20 minutes work, or and then a 15 minute break, and then during that 15 minute break, I mean, I I, I can read uh, my book on my phone, mm -hmm. or I'm taking a little walk to the mailbox because it's at the end of the street instead of my driveway. So it's mm -hmm. in one of those like, I don't know box kind of mailbox, it has yeah. multiple mailboxes. I don't know what you call it, I don't have a name for it. My mom told me it to me once, but it wasn't a, a very memorable name. <laughs> but, I don't so, know, but I was not aware of it, no. So you're seated at your desk. Uh, it's very easy to lose track of time. Uh, I do it myself. I find now with especially my website, um, again, you know, with the advancement of technology at a rate that uh, no wonder, you know, back in, the, in, in my 
when I first started my career, the, the craze was moving your body. That's what people did. It was a physical uh, craze where, you know, you get to the gym. I had a part-time job at Catherine's Lady Fitness. That I would go teach five classes every night. Um, and the classes were packed, right? That, that was the craze. People just wanted to move because it made them feel good. So over the years, that has slowly changed with the, with the um, especially more so with the introduction of technology, not to the extreme that it is now. So back to the, you know, my uh, initial point is that with my website, you know, it's hosted on GoDaddy. So GoDaddy has advanced so much since I've, I've joined, uh, I've been with them since 2005. So the website itself, the back, back office has changed so much that at times I go, oh my gosh, I don't understand all this. So I have to call them and they have to assist me. And then- I did not miss those days. Yeah, so, so before I know it, I've spent two hours trying to fix something that, you know, maybe 10 years ago would have taken me five minutes. So that's how much change I notice with, with the um, advancement of technology. Uh, One thing, I'm sorry. So, go ahead. Uh, uh, what, you, what your point of the back end of changing, you know why they, what I've noticed in the, the uh, tech industry as well is that, you know, people, it's not always the, even though that the, the, it's new to the user, and I find that developers, and I'm not saying every developer, but a lot of developers, they think that, oh, it's easy for me, but it's not going to be easy for the next person down the road. And I've even caught some stuff where, even though, like I said, my background of technology right. is a lot different from yours, but I, but I'll give you an example. Uh, I, I'm in this video production class in my um, on college, uh, in college, and I'm honestly afraid to. Uh, I'm actually going to admit this, and this says something a lot about me. I'm going to be using a seven thousand dollar camera, and I'm afraid to touch it oh. <laughs> because it, because yeah. and, and 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 I have to watch all these videos uh, before I, and take a small little demonstration, do a some kind of a test, not a written test, but to show mm -hmm. that I can use this. And it's like, well, wouldn't this be much easier if I? did this in person following the YouTube videos along mm -hmm. with it right then and there. And so I'm memorizing everything from the video, but I don't know. But like I said, uh, I, 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 I can see what you sort of mean by, you know, they just, uh, what you say that the technology is always changing and mm -hmm. some people like some developers, and it's like, hey, people should just know how to use this. It's straightforward for us. Well, oh my God, no. <laughs> for you, but if it takes, if I literally have to Google a question to yeah. how to work your technology, then it's not very straightforward, is it? <laughs> exactly. You know, I I should mention that I did take uh, when I first moved to British Columbia, Canada. I uh, decided to. Um, enroll in acting classes at the Vancouver Film School. So, um, and I've been on like student films where, you know, it's a, it's a whole, it, it, it takes hours. I mean, you've got people that specialize in proper lighting and you've got the cameraman that knows every angle and, you know, which is the best angle to get that lighting and reflect on the most better way of your, you know, angles of your face and all that. It really is a, a, uh, an art. 
And when you're trained in it, you can actually, especially with photos, right? I've done a lot of photo shoots. Um, the camera, the, the, the photographer, it, it takes hours to get the perfect angles of the model, of, of the individual. And here we are, right? Um, take myself, for example. I'm not trained in lighting and I'm not trained in, okay, well, this camera is going to do the right job, right? So it's been a learning process for many, many people to adapt to this new way uh, of meeting and networking, right? Like I'm so grateful that we are able to do this, to, to meet each other and um, get to know each other, how, how we can interview one another and do business with one another. Uh, but the process of adapting to this new way and keeping up with, okay, well, perfect example, this new camera I bought didn't work with this platform. <laughs> so I had to quickly, and you know, I almost threw out this camera that, that is working on this platform. And I thought, no, I better keep it just in case. It's a great little camera. I plugged it in and it worked. So all these changes um, is actually creating a new way of stress. There's a new stressor out. And that stressor is called mental stress. That's what I had in July. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people are under that mental stress. And if we look at the cycle of abuse, there's physical, there's mental, there's emotional. It has been statistically proven that, you know, the physical abuse, of course, is, is bad. You know, no one should ever be, be abused that way. And they say that emotional abuse uh, brings on a, you know, plerefa of, of emotions that are hard to, to gauge and deal with. But it has been proven that mental stress, mental abuse is one of the worst types of abuse that anybody, any human can experience. Why? Because it's a direct attack on your thought process so imagine this rise now in in my industry when i first started it was the physical right it was this inactivity that all of a sudden this craze remedied this inactivity by getting people off of the couch into a gym and and working out that type of craze enhanced the mental activity, right? Because when you're moving your body, that mental stress is being released, right? It, you're in a, in a space where there's music playing, you're in a group of people with the same common goal, hey, let's have fun, let's move our body, let's, you know, sweat it out to this brand new thing this new stressor where, hey, my mind has to now learn something totally not within my expertise, within my, my uh, mind, within my emotions. It's, it puts a lot of stress on, on the world population. So how do we remedy that? Uh, since COVID, I actually... Um, started actually i started this in 2014 on block talk radio where it wasn't a visual show um i started to talk about the the, the premise of it was move your body <clears throat> excuse me that was the title of the series and i touched upon every muscle group and i described each muscle group and how to train each muscle group once COVID hit, I thought, okay, I've got to get, get this visual now onto my YouTube channel. So I went out there and I, I did these videos where, you know, uh, because of the, the six feet apart 
stigma and the shutdown of all gyms around, <clears throat> excuse me, Canada and the US and I'm pretty sure worldwide, <clears throat> I thought, hey, you know what? I can show people how to still remain active, but go outdoors or do it within your house. So move your body was has been evolved in that way of visual content of how to keep moving and releasing the stressors in in our minds, releasing uh, through meditation, through breath, um, through hey, you know what? You can use this piece of equipment, anchor it onto the tree, and you you can do your your pull downs for your latissimus dorsi. You can do your you know, back rows for your rhomboids. You can do bicep curls using elastic bands. There are remedies. There are solutions. We just need to now um, motivate people to step away from the desk, not to become a desk potato, right? So take yeah. that break. Take that break for about whatever. And back in, when I started in the industry, that workout that I taught, <clears throat> excuse me, was 20 minutes long. That's not a long time, actually. 20 minutes, we had <clears throat> the warm-up, the cardio, the, the uh, cardio cool-down, the strength training, and then a stretch. Boom, done. 20 minutes of your day, you are able to include all those components to maintain a healthier body weight to release the stress and and when we work out the endorphins in the brain elevate and that they're known as the happy happy endorphins right those those happy thoughts yeah yeah i worked out and you feel great about yourself that's yeah. something you do jimmy <laughs> uh, yeah well um, Picture this in your mind real quick. My, my, uh, uh, when I, when I was a, uh, when my parents were di downsizing our house in Pennsylvania, and yes, I still live with my parents. For those who don't know, that is only because my school is a commuter school, mm -hmm. and the school I'm planning to go after I finish uh, my uh, associate's degree. My college, my my new college is literally right up the street from my house. So why would I am going to move out yeah. and I can live thirty minutes away instead of like a minute away? So that'd be stupid on my part. Uh, <laughs> hey, at least I have logic sense. Uh, but uh, but but picture this. So when I was at the sh my shore house, living there for six months. So even if you, if you think this room is tiny, my room down the shore is much tinier than my room up here in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And then my mom likes to argue with me that uh, that it's about the same size. I was like, no, it's not about the same size because I can fit a gosh darn my gosh darn desk into that room. I can only mm -hmm. fit in uh, one of those car table long. Uh, I wouldn't say desk, but one of those long car table tables in the room that folds up and puts away. Well, so my point is, I the, this computer desk I, I really like because I can literally move anywhere around in my room because it's all hardwood floor. Then my mm -hmm. shore house, it's all uh, carpet, and so I have this kind of outside inside chair, but it didn't move. So mm -hmm. pretty much every single time I had to get up, I had to, now I know that this is going to sound silly. It's like, oh, well, you're lazy to get up. And it's like, but the chair got stuck on the carpet. I had to literally stand up and then push back first. This chair, I can go anywhere. I can move around. I felt like I was in literally a, a two by two jail cell sitting mm -hmm. in a chair. It's like, that sucks. <laughs> And like, where, where space is very limited for movement. 
Yeah, and, and like, and if I backed up too much, the bed was right behind me. Sure, I can touch the bedpost here, but you know, what? there's plenty of room over here to just move my chair this way, move back this way. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I'm cramped in this room. Over here, over this way to the left of me, there's enough space that I can actually work out in my room. My parents are like, you don't have enough space to work out in your room. It's like, what do you think I'm going to do in my room? Kick the air? I was like, well, you were doing that for karate class on Zoom. It's like, I'm going back in to karate in person. See ya. Bye. I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> I'm not doing uh, well, what, do you do? what, what I would actually suggest. I mean, when I think of core unit, a um, perfect example is the ball. You know how many people use a ball at their desk? Probably a lot. Build core stability to strengthen their core. Uh, um, a lot of clients have met, told me that they prefer sitting on the ball because it feels better on their back. So as a trainer, I, I make sure I, I inform my clients that one of the things that they need to be conscious of when they are seated on the ball, because what you're describing to me, you know, with your chair and you're saying, you know, I can move there and move there. I'm, I'm watching you. Uh, I watch biomechanics, right? So when you're in my studio, I'm watching your every move. And the way you're moving now reminded me of clients seated on the ball and moving around in the same way, right? It, it does strengthen the core, but one of the things you need to be conscious of is that you're not actually tilting the hip, right? Especially- Oh, Bye-bye. <laughs> what? Oh, they're going bye-bye on the floor. <laughs> I'll just fall <laughs> over. Whoops. So, so what that does for someone that has uh, lordosis, in the lower back, right? So lower doses, I'm going to demonstrate with my hand, is that it's the, it's a curvature in the lower spine, right? So if you're on the ball and then your hips go forward, they tilt, then it's all of a sudden the, the spinal, that curvature is being forced to be um, reconditioned to sit in a different position, which can cause lower back issues, you see. So it's important to be seated in a chair that allows you the proper alignment. Um, for people that are seated longer, for longer hours at their desk, what starts to happen is, you know, they start to slouch forward. So, uh, the kyphosis sets in, surrounding of the shoulders. They start to get comfortable sitting like this. You know, if they have a phone, they're sitting like this for long periods of time. Um, you know, they're leaning forward to type and their, their, their chin is starting to stick out more, you know, reading the screen. So that movement you just demonstrated may be beneficial for you because you are in the chair well, if that makes sense yeah well you know what else helps i've been using a i have a lumbar pillow on my on my chair mm -hmm. and you know mm -hmm. my dad always likes to uh, give me a hard time about being so healthy and fit and i said to him I was like you know i have a very bad spine to begin with since pretty much the okay. day i was born so why mm -hmm. am i going to screw it up even more uh, and like I, I used to have one for my car, but uh, that, that's another story for another time. And mm -hmm. but uh, and and I still have that lumbar pillow, but I, I don't need it for the short trips here and there, or if I'm going down to the shore with my parents and I'm driving with them in the car, because mm -hmm. uh, I mean, like, okay, the shore is two hours, but. Yeah. I have the seat upright in position, not like, oh, leaning back. And it's like, yeah, I'm going to be lazy. And it's like, nope, mm -hmm. I'm still sitting up in chair like this. So it's not like, oh, that's, even though the chair can go back or can go 
slightly back to round my shoulders is like mm -hmm. not happening. Right. Um, so now as well, you'll hear about um, standing desks. So there's desks now where uh, oh, I, could never, I, I could never use one of those. Yeah, I, I think you know that that's good in a way that if you don't want to be seated for too long, then okay, you, you stand up. Um, but then again, you can't be standing for too long because you know your postural alignment will change right and like like you said um if you can't stand up for you know uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and if, you have, if you have hip joint issues if you've got knee issues that's not going to remedy your situation by standing at a standing desk so you know there are tools you can use um to take your break uh, I was going to suggest to you, hey, you've got your chair, right? Um, get five pound weights and you can do like, you know, lean back into your, your chair and just do chest presses, you know, to, to keep the chest muscles strong. You can also do back, you know, back flies. Or you're like keeping the, your range of uh, Yeah, you can do push ups. You know, you can do overhead presses for your, your deltoids. You can do, um, you know, your, your deltoids, your shoulders. You've got your uh, anterior, your medial, and their posterior. So basically, in regular language, you've got your front, middle, and back. You can work those muscles with light weights being seated at your desk if you need to take a break. And I always suggest to clients, if you're going to be seated for a long period of time, that's those are great little ideas that you can incorporate while you're being seated, especially when you find that you're starting to tighten up in the upper back and, and shoulder area, you know, take a break, roll your shoulders back, roll them forward, shrug them, just loosen up the, the tightness. You can also work the neck area, your cervical spine. So, and, and that is a very important uh, area that most people overlook is the health of your cervical spine. So your cervical spine is actually located right there, right behind your, your neck, right? So you can do stretches like tilting the chin forward and very gently with your hands, guide your chin close, as close as possible to the chest. And you, you'll feel a, an amazing stretch through, through the back of the neck that once you do that, you go, oh, my gosh, that feels good. You can also stretch up the side of the neck by just tilting, you know, drop your arms to the side and then tilt your right ear to the right shoulder. You're going to feel a good stretch through the side of the neck. And if you really want a, a more in-depth stretch, you take your right hand and very gently just guide your ear closer to the shoulder, you know, and take your time with it. I mean, don't force the stretch. If, if it's not comfortable at a certain angle, keep it there. And then the next day you can, you know, try to actually touch that ear to the shoulder because you're reprogramming your muscles, right? You're reprogramming this area. So take your time, take it one step at a time. You know, you don't want to injure yourself and you don't want to over pull or over stretch um, muscle groups. So those are little changes people can actually make just to keep yourself comfortable at your desk if you're there for a long period of time. I know I'm not allowed to do any neck stretches because of my neck issue mm -hmm. uh, i guess i have spinal stenosis which makes it mm -hmm. hard for me to move my neck left yep. and right and up and down and mm -hmm. uh i the times when i just like at least like do some head rolls very slowly but carefully sometimes mm -hmm. I, I i get like a kink out if, but but then it's like yep. Oh, that didn't sound the best but because I know my neck is very uh, delicate. And mm -hmm. uh, and I remember the, the last time I saw a neck doctor, and don't judge because 
I have, I mean, not you, but I mean, people watching later on, do not judge. I haven't seen one in a while only because I got new insurance and I'm still trying to find new doctors. So it takes a few times to find the doctor you connect with because uh, I had some bad luck with some doctors, not naming any names, uh, <laughs> but they, but for me, when I, so, like, and I also can't do sh uh, shoulder presses anymore because it goes too much into the, the neck. Uh -huh. At least that's what I find. So, because if you press overhead and it's really right on the edge of the neck, yeah, so the trap yeah. pieces. Yeah. And so, what I do instead, like, I, I can still do the mine going out this way, which I don't mind doing but I can only do that with free weights. And unfortunately my free weights are all the way in the basement packed behind mm -hmm. the lot of uh, boxes and other stuff that I can't <laughs> use at the moment. So well, I do have in my closet, but- You gotta get me motivated. You gotta bring them out and, and, and just start off really slowly, right? Yeah, eventually I'm gonna get to those weights and put yeah. work out down in the basement, but I don't have the, uh, ex I don't have the the easy access to it at the moment because everything is in the way, and I and I don't think having even small or lightweight dumbbells in your hand going through the over the hurdles of boxes and stuff is very safe. It's like, yeah, I can see too many predict too many things happening. Hey, let's drop this on my foot. Hey, that's a great idea. You don't want that happening. <laughs> so how many hours do you think people sit at the desk on average? Um, with my experience in corporate wellness, uh, you know, I, I don't know what, what new uh, policies are incorporated with corporations and their employees working remotely. But uh, generally speaking, there's an eight-hour workday, right? So that eight-hour workday would usually include two breaks and then a lunch hour, whether it's a half hour, 45 minutes, or to an hour. So, you know, minus that, what, the workday is probably decreased by, you know, an hour or, yeah, an hour. So more um working remotely <clears throat> hopefully it's it's less than that uh because you are at home right <laughs> it's like a I, I personally think it's like an invasion of your home space when you um with this new way of working remotely i mean it's nothing new right it's a home businesses are nothing new uh, they have been around for quite a while but most home businesses are created by uh, entrepreneurs so they actually regulate their time or schedule their time uh, in accordance to what they want to allow into their home-based business if that makes sense right so for instance, for myself, it's four hours. You know, I have four hours I will spend on the computer and do my shows, be on other shows. That's my limit because I have to incorporate my activities as well. That's not something I just let go of, right? Um, sometimes, yeah, there are days, like I mentioned earlier, you know, if I'm doing updates on my website and I'm like, okay, I've got to get some help with it. I got to call my, um, platform to help me with that. And then next, you know, it's been more than four hours, right? So it's, it, we, we got to really gauge how to, um, it's called time management. Right, so yep. time management is still a huge part of our lifestyle. 
So if your work day starts at 9 a.m. or 9.30, well, why not try to get up earlier, right? Say 7 o'clock, whether you want to go outside for a run, a brisk walk, uh, do that. Get some activity into your day so that you are still maintaining movement, right? So to answer your question, it, it's um, <clears throat> definitely changed quite a bit in terms, sorry, I, I bought this new clock. <laughs> it has a it's like a robot. <laughs> um, it, it's quite unique. I kind of like it. Actually, I love it. I think it's cool. Uh, Terminator is so, coming back for part five. Pardon me? The Terminator is coming for back, back for part five. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, we don't want that. <laughs> but uh, to answer your question, so it it's all depends. If you're self-employed, if you're an entrepreneur, you have a home office, you can gauge your time. You can gauge time to include uh, a wellness plan, include optimal nutrition. Now that's a different issue altogether, right? So as I mentioned earlier, when you're working in a corporation, my background is corporate wellness, uh, you know, everything's scheduled. So their breaks are scheduled, your lunch break is scheduled. And um, so now being, in the remote area of work, where work is at home now through corporations, uh, gauge it. Don't sit at your desk and put your snacks. You know, I would say 90% of people are not eating healthy. In fact, heart disease and diabetes is on the rise even more so. So when people are snacking at their desks, Rather than, you know, potato chips or uh, I would say, and I'm saying this because a lot of my corporate clients would complain about that 3 p.m. crash. So 3 p.m. rolls around, they feel tired, they want to go to sleep. And that's usually from not getting enough protein in the system, uh, blood sugar is dropping and uh rather than grab a healthy snack you grab something that's going to be a quick fix and that quick fix is usually simple sugars so if you have a chocolate bar on your desk you go okay i'll just have a piece of chocolate eat that you feel great for what an hour two hours and then there's a crash for 10 minutes yeah that's common. Or oh, are you resonating with that? <laughs> Is that why you're uh, smiling? No, I'm. I've been there and done that uh, when I was uh, when when I was uh, when I was uh, in high school when I thought I could eat anything when I was starting mm -hmm. to work out. Mm -hmm. That's not the case, man. I wish it was, uh, but. So, but now I snack on uh, mix, healthy mixed nuts. Uh, and that's not the same old, same old. Like I got one that was like pistachios that was uh, chili pistachios that were just a new flavor. It was like, mm -hmm. yes, please let me try this. I'm gonna, uh, but it's, it's just sounded unique. And, and so, and it, it didn't have any like any, any ingredients that stood out to me, like, oh, this will be harmful to my health or whatnot, mm -hmm. or natural flavors. I didn't have that on the package. It's just like, here, this is cumin and whatnot. And, oh, and so, so I was like, okay, healthy nuts. Yeah. More flavor to it, not <laughs> breaking. And, and, you know, I, I finally, I uh, realized on uh, two of the containers, uh, mm -hmm. and again, this is maybe just 
me or it just could just be my brain. But I, I, I realize um, why maybe some people get confused on, well, two reasons why people get confused on uh, nutritional labels, because mm -hmm. one of them say an ounce is about 30 uh, whole nuts. Well, the other yeah. one says about one fourth of a cup. Mm -hmm. Well, isn't that the same thing? Because, yeah, and excuse me if I'm wrong on this, but wouldn't an ounce be like one eighth of a cup? Uh, because because uh, I have this kind of like cool sort of measuring cup. And I, really? I, I don't like, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I don't, not like one for baking, but this one, it, 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 it's like a colorful one and it has and it's painted by someone mm -hmm. and what what's of course it's my mom's not mine but but i'm just using an example but it has like one fourth in it but then on the very bottom at the very bottom is one eighth of a cup and and i noticed that it was like a little right be like pretty much the middle of the bowl right before the one fourth mm -hmm. and i was like so that's an ounce, uh, and it's like so. You know, there's not a consistency in the labels. And yeah. like one says, and like one says one fourth, uh, like uh, about thirty whole nuts, and the other one says uh, about one fourth of a cup. Just be consistent for Pete's right. sake. <laughs> I know, and and you know what, I did research. I, as you know, I'm from Canada, so uh, I live here in Washington State now with my husband. I'm PR status, yay. <laughs> I'm part of the U.S. <laughs> um, but I was going to say that I did some market research in 2003 where I actually went out to the mall in Langley, British Columbia, and I just asked the general public, you know, what confused them about health and wellness. And I did, I asked them three sub questions about nutrition, fitness, and just overall health. And one of the things, once I finished my research, um, it came out that the general public is confused about nutrition, just like you mentioned. And it's, it's not just about measurement, but it's also about the ingredients. You know, uh, the ingredients have changed in packaged foods over the years. So, I yeah, uh, I know in Canada, uh, Canada does not allow corn syrup, it's actually banned. RBST is banned. Um, they just use different uh, ingredients in terms of when it comes to the sugar. Uh, when I compare a label from Canada, packaged food, to here in the U.S., in the U.S., in a label alone, it has glucose, fructose, corn syrup, um, high fructose. I mean, this is in one label sometimes. And I think, okay, we have an issue here. The issue with it's high, simple sugar in one package, which causes heart disease. It causes diabetes. So this is where we need to raise the awareness to decrease heart dis disease in America, decrease diabetes. I read that that is on the rise, not just in the United States, but as well in Canada. Why? Because the, sed the, the death potato syndrome is part of the, the problem now. It's no longer the couch potato syndrome. So what are the remedies? And I am um, happy to say that 
now the U.S. government has created, it's, it's going to be hosted, it's a satellite event on September 28th, uh, where they will be discussing the changes they are going to be making to ensure that Americans are much healthier by 2030. Well, that's a long ass way away. <laughs> well, you know, that's undoing years and years of, it's going to take that long to make changes. Why? Because there are certain factors that contribute to making those changes. I am hosting a virtual event on Monday. On uh, it, you can go to Eventbrite. It's ho it's you can register. It's a free event um, where I'm going to discuss that research that I just talked That's about. Monday. Next Monday, um, it's uh, September twelfth, one o'clock PST time. So I'm going to discuss nutrition and i'm going to discuss food labeling there's a couple of uh some other subjects i'm going to throw in there as well but that virtual or satellite event will be shared with the white house because they want to see how people people like my background anybody that works within the health and wellness industry they want to learn about how we are trying to make this change uh, by sharing our expertise to the communities and i invite you you know please visit the uh, i can in, uh, send you the, the link actually to the the event share it far and wide it's not just to local communities it's it's farther than that you know we want to get people educated making those changes but the first step really is the input of the government. How are they going to assist U.S. citizens to start making these changes for a healthier America? I said it about, I think, two weeks ago on a podcast. I said it loud and clear. If you have a healthy population, you will have less illness, you will have a healthier economy because your citizens are able to work. So that gets everything cranked up, right? That's what makes you a leader on the world stage when you have a healthy population. Let's look at Sweden, right? It's one of the, the, the countries that that's what they revolve around is making sure that their citizens are healthy they have access to organic food they have access to gyms they have access to medicine to medical to not whether they, it's medical um, or they have access to natural remedies nothing is being prohibited from them so what does that tell me as a professional? That tells me that they are leading their citizens to health and wellness. They are, they are leading their economy to remain healthy because their, their citizens are able to work. There's less time, less downtime, less injuries, less illness, less reliance on the system itself. So what do I mean by that? I mean less access to social programming, right? Because if citizens are healthy, they're not going to be sick. They're not going to be running to the social programs going, hey, I need money. I can't afford to go to see my doctor. Can you pay it for me? That's going to decrease. And then you have, let's look at the youth, right, in the schools. Once that's all plugged in, you will have students that are, their learning abilities have only become better, healthier, because they become more focused to learn. So then you have a heavily educated population evolving. That's what makes you a leader. And what, and what about 
actually adding nutrition to the curriculums of some of the schools. Absolutely. I mean, I'm, like, you know, I'm not saying like, okay, have, let's say if someone was in, I wouldn't say put it in preschool because no one knows anything at preschool. To be honest, I didn't even know anything at preschool. Uh, I mean, I forget what my, what I did in preschool, but but could, could put it at like an elementary level, but ha, but teach it in a way where they'll understand, and then you have it in middle school again, but then take it up a level, and then you do the same for the high school, and then have the same for college, and and, and but but and and I don't mean in college, you're professionalizing in nutrition. I mean, you can if you want to go that route, but also have it as a class in general. Like it'd be, everyone has to learn how to uh, better to be healthy. So it's a mandatory class. Like for instance, my video production class is part of my major, but so have it a part of everyone's major. It has a, have it a requirement math. Uh, English and science is, and history is a requirement for all of the majors. Have nutrition. You know, I wouldn't mind having like a basic nutrition course. You know, you know, sure, you know, it might be hard, but you know, I wouldn't mind learning. Hey, uh, just don't dive too huge into it. Like, oh, the, I, I'm you're majoring in this, but here's the basic nutrition. Here's what you should be able to be eating. Here's the healthy foods. Here's a long list of healthy stuff. And here's some tools and resources uh, mm -hmm. to get you on the right path. Here's how you can track your food digitally. Um, uh, uh, with paper or whatever it is. You know, I think one of the most important things to do um, is not to make it too complicated. And, and the reason why I say that is because we make like, everything complicated. Yeah, I, I like to reflect, you know, when I started in the industry, and I'll tell you why. Because when I started, you know, th it was a craze, absolutely. But it was simple. You know, there was not none of this. I mean, over the years, the industry itself has has gone in 10 different, more directions than ever before with the introduction of various equipment and different types of classes, which is great. You know, you, we, we move our bodies in a different way. Now with nutrition, nutrition has also evolved, right? And so because of that, that growth, it has gone in so many directions uh, with the addition of, you know, genetically modified foods, a splice an apple and put it in with a, you know, a pear. And what do we have with that? I mean, let's, let's not forget that people have allergies as well. So we need to simplify things for the consumer, right? Remember, I, I did the research people were confused. We're like, they would say to me, well, I don't even know what to eat anymore. Am I supposed to eat genetically modified foods? Is it okay to have soy? Is it okay to have this? Is it, you know, because out there, when, when things are introduced, we have so many uh, resources. You know, resources, but then you have these companies and then I've, I've seen ads where trainers you know, it, it saddens me to, to see it sometimes because I, I think you're only confusing the consumer. So when the government comes in and says, hey, we want to host this event, a satellite event to end hunger, to improve nutrition uh, and health. Well, one thing they need to realize is that the market Let's, let's look at the supplement industry, for example. When I first started in the industry, I never had a protein shake. I didn't have to. I ate everything, you know, and I we ate healthy. We had salads. We had our protein, you know. It came from nutrition. Now, over the years, an industry has come in, and it is a 
billion dollar industry. I work in the industry. So going from not confused to confusion, and this is where we need to make it simple for the average consumer who goes out there, does their grocery shopping, reads the label and says, okay, the, okay, prime example, I would take my children with me shopping. I taught them at a very young age. It's normal for kids to run to that sugar aisle, right? And grab a, a packaged food and say, I want this. And then I take it from them. And I read the label and I don't say no. I say to my, I would say to my sons, okay, I want you to read that label and tell me if there's anything on that label that you understand. And they would stand there and look at the label and, and try to pronounce these long words, right? <laughs> Which in reality, we don't really know what the ingredient is. And they would say, well, I don't understand this. And I'd say to them, okay, if you don't understand it, put it back. We don't want it in our system. We don't want it in our body because it's not clear. It creates confusion. So I understand what you're saying and I completely agree with it but because we need to air out that confusion. We need to streamline things where, you know what? Here's a course on nutrition. This is what you look for. Understand your calories, how to calculate your fats, your carbs, your protein, and by the way, fat is the highest calorie, as we all know. Uh, these are ingredients that are good for you. These are ingredients that are not, that contradict health, that are not even healthy, right? So the process of change is going to take a while because now we also have to think about these manufacturing companies cereal manufacturers, um, you know, anything that's canned, the government has to work in collaboration with these people, these, these corporations and say, this, these are the changes we want to see. Eliminate corn syrup. And they Elim can find them. Well, this is a process. And as we raise our voices, we hope that the change does happen to create a healthier America, which in turn will create a healthier economy. It's a simple solution, right? <laughs> but, but here we are today, you and I talking about this. And um, I'm very grateful that you bring up these, these little issues that you know, I say little, really, they're not little. They're huge issues that need to be addressed. But, and but, go on. but also, it's, it's kind of like the, uh, for instance, if somebody never baked before, you know, I, th I thought of this great idea, and please, somebody go use it, uh, who has... Uh, that kind of power up in uh, I don't know companies or uh, well maybe you should say it maybe you need to bring it to the table on Monday and make it that type of suggestion um, but, because but you know what I was say, uh, but you know most people who don't bake they don't know necessarily what a tablespoon is they reach into their uh, uh, drawer and say oh, oh a tablespoon of peanut butter oh I can use this huge big spoon of peanut butter. <laughs> There, there's a tablespoon. No, a table, you know what they should do on the food label for tablespoons? The one you bake with. Not the, not the one in your drawer, the one you bake with. It doesn't have to be one. It, it doesn't have to be very long. You, you can make the label a little bit bigger, a little wider, and it's just the one you bake with. And there, and it's like, oh, that, oh, that tablespoon. Oh, I bet it's the one in in the drawer where oh, with all the other silverware. And it's, woo, hey, look at, I'm measuring that out. 
That's how big, <laughs> this is a tablespoon. That's how big a tablespoon is. Literally, <laughs> the OK sign. I think it's still the OK oh, sign. I'm not sure. You're, you're hitting the uh, nail with the hammer because when you when you talk about measurement, right? We're, we're looking at consumption. So people don't have that that knowledge of how much should I really be eating in one serving? Right? They're just eating and oh, I'm so hungry. Well, there's a reason why you're so hungry. If you're eating and then you say you're still hungry, then your nutrition is off. Your consumption is, is not right. Are you not even drinking enough water? Yeah. Well, you know, these are things we need to raise awareness of. Um, nutrition is so finely tuned you know, according to your height, your weight, I mean, we can get so technical with it. Uh, and, and even more so for anybody that that's training heavily for a competition or, you know, play sports, their nutrition, nutritional demands are much greater than someone that is actually seated at a desk, you know, the desk potato, their nutritional requirements are two different uh, scenarios. So it, it's, but if you take the general, like you said, let's educate, let's raise awareness. Uh, hey, a teaspoon is this small. It's the okay sign. Protein. How much protein does does an average individual need? Well, a good measurement is your fist. This is my protein requirement. So if I'm going to, I don't eat red meat. I haven't touched red meat since I was 10 years old. Um, but if I'm going to have a broiled uh, chicken breast or, you know, um, turkey, I'm just going to go like this and say, okay, this is all I need in terms of protein. So, yes, we can simplify it. We have um, the knowledge. We have the tools. We just need to share it out there in a way that's understandable. You know, I listen to a lot of um, various professionals and uh, sometimes it's so technical that they've lost the individual consumers don't want to get confused they don't want to hear the jargon hey if you've got three years of kinesiology and a year of nutrition they don't want to hear the the jargon our lang language they want to understand it in a way that's simple that when they go out grocery shopping, they go, okay, so fats, you times it by nine. So if, you, if it's, uh, say, five grams of fat in a product, you times that by nine, okay, 45 grams of fat is, is what I'm going to be putting into my body. Are that's you all it is. If, if you can't do that, and, then, and I'm not saying that, like, anybody who can't do math or anything, but somebody who's not uh, math, uh, mm -hmm. who's not like really, really good at math and not like a math genius or can't do math off the top of the head because I'm gonna admit, I cannot do math off the top of my head. I mean, I can do simple multiplication, but right. when I'm going up to the hundreds and two hundreds, yeah, I'm at a loss. But you know, uh, that's why these cell phones have a calculator. <laughs> well, either that, but also you know, there's these, uh, there's my fitness pal or um, uh, my plate, and I'm not talking about the government my plate because that thing is garbage, and I used it for a semester in uh, oh. nutrition before I actually changed my major. But uh, uh, but my point. Uh, telling everyone that is uh, you can scan, there's a barcode scanner and most of the time it works. Sometimes it doesn't always have it, but then you can also uh, dig through it and uh, search through it, the database of what they have. And like, for instance, let's say Skippy peanut butter, uh, just off the top of my, because that's the brand I use. And no, I'm not getting paid to say that. 
boy, I wish. Come on, Skippy, <laughs> peanut butter. Uh, pay me for my share, please. Thank you. Uh, but the uh, but one thing that I, when I type in uh, Skippy peanut butter, that it, it's it shows two. Uh, uh, the serving size is two tablespoons, and so it, it says already 100, 190 calories. Mm -hmm. And I finally figured out what what a uh, only one tablespoon is, and that's only point zero point five or point zero five, whatever. Uh, and so that's uh, only ninety five calories. So mm -hmm. it, it, it kind of helps you. I'm a Saying it's a, they're always 100% accurate because you can't find every little food and crane like sushi. And if you have the specialty rolls, you're not going to find it in there. But it's like mm -hmm. a tuna roll, uh, or maybe you might be able to find it. But uh, but Skippy peanut butter, it's in there. Sometimes it doesn't always show up by the barcode scanner because I don't know. Sometimes technology, like we had today, technology sucks. Mm -hmm. uh, it's great when it works. It sucks when it doesn't. But just to wrap up a little bit, the it, it it it's helpful to me because it's showing me where the calories are coming from, and it's helping me do the math. So I'm not uh, I'm not the best at math. I can understand math. I can learn the math, but I might not be able to retain it after a semester in college or a semester. Uh, later on, depending on depending on what the importance is to it, if it's if you're going to a marketing degree and you're taking statistics, okay, makes sense. I can I can um, I can do something like that once I learn it because I like oh this is practical use or right. it could be a percentage of something for my business or a percentage of how much calories am I taking etc. But it's like something geometry. Okay, what am I going to do with geometry? Am I, if I'm going to build a house, okay, that'd be useful. But if you're not becoming a, a construction worker, you, your geometry is probably like screw this or a home designer. You're not going to freaking use it. <laughs> yeah, we never, I used to always wonder why I had to take math in high school. <laughs> so back to grade eleven. <laughs> so. So again, not bashing any math professor professors no, or anything no. out there. I'm just, I'm just being realistic, and it's like you know, I'm one of those people. Who's like, okay, you know, I'm not a fan of math. I can do math. I can do math on the calculator, but you, you'll never see me do just. Uh, it's only basic math I can do on a on paper and pencil, but only to a certain extent extent because by because I, I the, when I had to take um, uh, what was uh, basic algebra in college because uh, I the, the first time I saw all the notes that I ran I was and by notes I mean like it was so many different uh, I don't know uh, problems that I wrote down. I I, I I mean I said to my teacher, I was like, I don't know what I just did. I just literally just wrote what you had on the board. And I was like, how did you get this and get this? And I was like, well I told you. But you know, we, we finally set them at uh, at the class multiple sessions in her uh, office hours every single week. And I finally got the hang of it. It's like and she's like, see it's so, so simple. It's like, yeah for you <laughs> I was like, it took me like five weeks to figure out that one problem. I was like, screw this. <laughs> so, uh, before we wrap up, uh, where can people find you and follow you and learn more information about who you are and what you do? I welcome you to visit me at Triple W Velocity Athletic Training. See behind me? Yep. Dot <laughs> com. Uh, you can also email me at iwin, that's I W I N, at velocityathletictraining.com. Awesome. I'll put that in the show notes when the episode gets, gets published. And uh, just our curiosity for that event on Monday, will there be a, a replay at the end of, at 
uh, at the end. So if somebody yes. uh, missed yeah. it, it will be recorded. Yeah. Okay. Because you know sometimes I like you know I want to attend, but I I do mm -hmm. have class on uh, at twelve o'clock my time, and then to, and it goes until one o'clock, and I think I. I don't know exactly what else I'm doing. And I have karate at night, so again, I might, might just have that four hours before karate to get all my st work stuff done. So, yeah, I'm not making excuses at all. I'm just, no, that's okay. just my time is like, can I do this? Can I not do this? Uh, I don't want to make any promises. But if right. you give me a replay, I'll definitely watch the replay. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I'll share it with you. Awesome. And uh, thank you. And uh, if you okay. give me that link, I'll uh, share it around social media. Uh, and uh, yeah, to be honest, I'm going to be honest with you. This episode will not get out uh, by. Uh, I mean, as a podcast, it won't go out on uh, by Monday. So <laughs> okay. no I I gotcha. <laughs> Thank you so much. No, ahead of time, I could, maybe I could do that, but I already have somebody uh, episode that is going to promote at the end of uh, this month. This month, which uh, I'm, I'll give you a hint. It was my uh, not for you, but for everyone else. My uh, uh, lens episode is coming out next uh, in two weeks. So make sure you subscribe to the podcast because. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'll share this too. I'll share your podcast within my network. And uh, I appreciate the invitation. I enjoyed being on the show. And um, we will plug away in making a difference to make health, a healthy America. You and me definitely got to. Uh, you, you and me, uh, you definitely got to have to come back on the show in the future because there's. Oh, thank uh, you. Because you know, even though we were on air for what, like an hour and thirty minutes, mm -hmm. we probably only scratched the surface of health and nutrition. Oh and, yeah. And I'm not an expert in health and nutrition. I know what's been working for me, but I'm always willing. You know, I wish I only go for an hour for the show. But, you know, because uh, I'm so passionate about uh, health and nutrition, I was like, you know, let's push it uh, yeah. to more because, you know, can't everything fit into an hour? It doesn't work that way. True. True. Uh, Thank you so much. Definitely. And uh, I'll let you know when this episode, uh, this podcast episode is published. The live stream is already there since it's live, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I'll give you that link to it uh, in email. And are you on social media, by the way? Oh, yes. Uh, I'm on Instagram and LinkedIn. Uh, if you can, uh, send me those links. Uh, sure. I, or maybe I already have them. I got to check. Uh, I, I've been all over the place today. So i literally been out <laughs> from like 10 o'clock in the morning all the way to pretty much like 1.30 in the afternoon. So it's like... I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> That's okay. my story today. I'll, I'll email you the event if you want to share that. And um, I'm also doing a summit called the Healers Gather Summit. So I've, um, during this period of time, this huge change in the world, um, I've done a lot of interviews. And so uh, my I'm, I'm a thought leader as well. So in shortly after COVID started, posted something about, uh, and it was just two words, it's, I posted remain resilient. So in the, the summit, I'm going to talk about the art of resiliency. And I've got my other presenters too that have remained resilient during this time. They're going to share their their journey during this time and how they've helped other people and how they've actually helped themselves as well. So it's going to be powerful. Uh, we're here to help each other. This is the main goal, uh, lift each other up and um, uh, put out as many resources as possible to help our fellow American, fellow Canadian uh, to keep moving forward. With optimism, <laughs> you can do it. 
<laughs> and, and, and when is that event for that? Um, it is on Friday, November 18th. And again, I will share that link with you. It is um, registration for both events are on Eventbrite, but it will be hosted on WebEx. So once people register, I, I will have an email and I will email the uh, the um, link to WebEx. To, is that to free or paid? It's free. Okay. It's free. Not that I have any problem with paying for events or anything. I just, no, okay. I think I, 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 no I have a general question. <laughs> no, it's free. It's coming from the heart. Uh, like I said, we're here to help each other and lift each other up, and that's that's the purpose right now. Awesome. And uh, send me those links, and I'll share it to yeah. my audience, and Thank I'll send you, you uh, this link. I probably send you the YouTube one because eventually Twitch. Uh, once the live stream passed, after X amount of time, it takes it down. On, oh. It doesn't keep a library like YouTube, so it makes mm -hmm. really. Though I might share the Twitch with you anyway, just because you know mm -hmm. I could always deal with followers and get more followers on Twitch. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's just a win-win for all of us anyway. So yeah, uh, I'll send you both. And okay. So. Uh, Give me about like maybe like uh, give me like an hour just only because I I'm gonna take a walk after this uh, just in my mailbox and I and I think I also have to call a uh, yeah I had to call my uh, I don't know if you see this but I have a medical alert bracelet oh, okay. and for my neck issue but mm -hmm. but. This design, I think they have a badly designed thing because it, this is how it goes. It goes to this little loop, right? Mm -hmm. And so underneath it, it it's been rubbing on the, on my skin every single time, and it gave me a bruise. Oh. I'm not gonna take the bandage yeah. off because I think uh, Google literally probably would say, "Ah, oh, you." And like you just show something gross on YouTube, um, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, don't take it. <laughs> we don't, don't like being that. red because it was rubbing against it, and so yeah. that extra part of the band is like literally digging into my skin every time when it mm -hmm. it tries to poke its go out this way, meaning mm -hmm. like, so it's like rubbing against my skin. So like. This is poorly designed, and it's like I wonder if anybody figured this out yet. So I'm gonna politely tell them and say, "Hey, do you have a different kind of band for this? Because like I can, and like, are you? Can you remake this for me? Because this is, uh, it's not working. Wow. I got it this month, so I can't see them saying no. But no. And, well, make sure you reach out to them. Yes, yeah, so, uh, I'm going to see if there's any if anybody had the, any concerns like this because like yeah I just literally just got my skin broken because of your uh, product I probably shouldn't say it that way mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, thank you for being on the show and uh, I hope you I hope I didn't take up too much of your time I just not at all I I, I, I think I think maybe going forward, I might do this a little bit longer with my my next few guests because you know we only scratch the surface every hour uh, on the mm -hmm. hour, and it's like, gee, what can you do in sixty minutes? I mean, you can do a lot, but on nutrition, holy crap, you you can literally spend oh, a lot. oh, absolutely. <laughs> So uh, thank you again for being on, and uh, uh, and uh, I hope you I hope you come back on for a, a future episode. Sure, I would love to. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. I'll see you in a few. Okay. So that's no all that we have time for today. And if you like this episode, please uh, subscribe, review, etc. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, I am actually simplifying all the links on social on all of these social media platforms so that they're all in one place. So you don't have to go 
hey, there's 800 million links. Which one do I click? Because, uh, you know, that, that's always fun. So uh, in the next, so that's going to be happening. And so uh, just one more time before uh, we wrap up. If you want to follow me, you can follow me at uh, Jimmy Clare Speaker on Facebook and Instagram and Jimmy Clare Speaker on Twitter. As always, you can follow Crazy Fitness Guy at Crazy Fitness Guy on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if there's an at Crazy Fitness Guy one somewhere, they're fake. Do not listen to them. They, uh, yeah, don't bother. That's not me. I, I'm the original Crazy Fitness Guy. Thank you very much. And if you want to, and uh, please help subscribe, help uh, support the show by going to and uh, subscribing to our YouTube channels and you and and Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and follow on the Wisdom app because you'll get notified of every single new uh, show. And um, when you subscribe, you help the channel keep growing, and more people will find it. And once this, uh, and like I said, you can find this uh, show on uh, the podcast on Apple, Google, and Spotify. And if you have any troubles um, with Google, find the episode, let me know. Because, yeah, I've had shows been magically removed from Google, by Google, and then it magically appears later on after I, after many weeks after I call them out on it. Thank you. Uh, not so much, Google. And if you want to help uh, support the show, go to crazyfitnessguide.com slash support. And, or, yeah, and and uh, subscribe to the premium podcast to get behind-the-scenes access, listen ad-free, and more. Uh, you can subscribe for five dollars a month or twenty dollars a year, and I'm gonna get some smaller plans of eventually. I'm still working out the kinks, can't do everything all in one day because I tried that and it turned out like poo. Yeah, that's what happens when you try to shove so many things in. It's not like fun, but until then. In the meantime, stay healthy, stay safe, and stay motivated, and I'll be back for another brand new episode of Crazy Fitness Guy, Healthy Living Podcast slash Weekly Motivation with Crazy Fitness Guy. Wow, that's a mouthful. Should I shorten it? Nah. Anyway, in the meantime, peace. Uh, If I can find...